Still to come on Intersection, a small solution to a big problem, finding affordable housing. It takes about two days to put together the structure. Uh, the inside would take another couple days. So within uh, a week, we could have a home ready for someone to live in. Welcome back to Intersection on 90.7 News. I'm Matthew Petty. The need for affordable housing is a big problem in Central Florida, but the solution might be to build small. Tim McKinney from United Global Outreach in Bithlow, East Orange County, wants to build a village of small homes, and he's just gotten the permit approved for the first of these homes. Well, Tim McKinney is the CEO of United Global Outreach in Bithlow. Thanks for joining us. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. We're also joined in the studio by Bill Ford. He's with New Dignity Homes. Thank you for joining us, Bill. Well, thank you for having us as well. Let's just start with the permit you've been given from Orange County. Now, this is for a small house project. Uh, Tim McKinney, what is the project? What are you hoping to achieve here? Well, we're building the region's first small home. So we're looking for um, excellent quality models of affordable housing, which we know throughout the region there is no inventory of affordable housing, which has caused a real problem and really exacerbated the homeless issue. So uh, in, as it relates to the Bithlow community, we have a lot of trailer homes that are really dilapidated and we're looking for models that can replace dilapidated trailers with safe quality homes that are similarly sized in scale. How big is the home? So this first model will have many floor plans over time, but this first model is 545 square feet with a 64 square foot uh, covered porch. So, you know, this is not a tiny home like you might see on Tiny Home Nation, a sure. small house on wheels. This is an actual home. On a, on a concrete foundation. It's pretty small though, I mean 545 square feet for somebody who lives in Central Florida, maybe a homeowner, that sounds quite small. Well that's why Bithlow is an excellent place to roll out this model of affordable housing because these are the scale of uh, trailers anyway. So we're not having a person downsize per se, we, they would be moving to a similarly sized place. So we could have a small family because this is gonna, this first unit will be two stories. So the furniture, everything will be very strategic so that we'll be able to maximize every square inch and get the most uh, out of that. And then we'll have common spaces when we ultimately develop out village concepts that will provide all the amenities that you would enjoy in any planned unit development. And how many of the homes are you gonna build in Bithlow? Well, I mean, there's no limit to the possibilities because we have hundreds and hundreds of trailers that and trailer parks that could use a, a, an alternative. But our first concept is to build 48 uh, small homes in what we call Dignity Village. Mm -hmm. Bill Ford, let me bring you into this conversation. Uh, you are gonna be building these homes, right? That's correct, yes, our organization. The, what we were challenged with was to develop a home that we could actually let the community help build as well. So the concept is to provide a home that can be bolted, screwed together, and get up in a very short period of time. Mm -hmm. uh, have skilled carpenters fill, finish the inside, but the outside could be built by the community itself. So what's the uh, completion time from the foundations to the, the roof going on? Like how long does it take to put one of these together? Well, that's the great news is the foundation can be put down within uh, a week. And then we uh, bring in a team to uh, assemble it, either volunteers or our staff or our group to be able to put it together. And it takes about two days uh, to put together the structure. Uh, the inside would take another couple days. So within uh, a week, we could have a home ready for someone to live in. Have you rolled out these homes elsewhere? Like is there somewhere else in the country where there's a, a, a village of these size houses? No village like we're talking about today. Um, we have these homes in uh, communities that are actually in the woods where they um, actually the uh, hunters uh, set up a shop and, and can uh, live in it for a season then take it down and move it along. So these are like hunting cabins? They are like it's like a hunting cabin. Well it was right. really birthed out of that actually yes. when I met with these guys and I was just kind of unrelated talking about our vision for small homes they were saying well we build hunting cabins and I was saying well we need something on steroids like that and that's kind of how they reconnected with me a couple of months later with really a product that I think covers all of the quality and standards that we were looking for. And then with the Orange County Building Department, I have to commend them because we have met all of the building codes with this, but in an unusual way because of the way that we're fastening the walls together, which makes it something that the community can build on uh, together, um, is not the normal way that you'd build a single family home. Well, how is it different? Well, let me, let me uh, go back with what Tim was saying on this, is that Tim challenged us with the ability to provide a home, but only if we were willing to live in it, okay? The original okay. was that setup. So we went back to the drawing boards and put together the shower and the inside, the bathrooms and those type of things. 
So that's how we had to create this concept uh, that would actually um, suffice the homeless in, in his areas. So Bill Ford, you've lived in one of these these structures? <laughs> no, but when they come up, I definitely will. So mm -hmm. uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's good enough for anyone to be able to live in. There's so. a difference though between a hunting cabin where you've got folks who are used to roughing it and they're only going to be there for a short period of time and a home, which is your place for good. You betcha. And that's why we were challenged to be able to provide showers and, and a little kitchenette um, you know, bathrooms, et cetera. So that's what we had to develop and, and uh, we're able to accomplish that. Where's your, your market for the hunting cabins? Just kind of going back to the source there, uh, whereabouts in the country are you building is Anywhere things? that people would like to have a place that um, they would like to have a place to stay while they're hunting, I'll say. Mm -hmm. um, so that's exactly how it uh, came about. But really, we are now focusing strictly on on doing uh, this project for the homeless and working with Tim and his community. And I mean, I see you're also looking at disaster relief structures. Is this something that's kind of evolved out of your conversation with Tim or is it? Oh, very much so. And mm -hmm. there's other models that we have to be able to handle those needs as well. And do you have some things in mind as far as where you'd like to see these structures go in? I mean, obviously the village concept at Bithlow is pretty important, but very much so. where else are you looking? Well, there's other communities um, like FEMA, those type of things where they have a need for massive uh, uh, structures. We have different models, but the key thing that we're working with in, in Bithlow is that we had to create this, this um, building that no one's seen before. And um, the Orange County did a magnificent job in talking about the permitting people to mm -hmm. understand the differences between this model and the other. It took us a little while to get through, but that was the great news is they actually understood it and, and are excited about it. When we were dealing with them, they said, we've never seen anything like this. We're a bolt together home of this quality and this size and that type of thing. So, And already it's sparking innovation. Seminole County Commission is studying building these small homes because this could be an option for smaller size lots that they're having to maintain that don't meet the current code. So, And Kissimmee as well is looking into doing this. So we're really pushing past all the barriers with our model home that's happening in Bithlow. But this is not just a Bithlow-centered initiative. It's how do we deliver this cost-effective, first-class model of affordable housing throughout the region. What were the challenges then of getting this permit? Like, what's the minimum size normally for a home in Orange County? Well, I mean, I'd say normally a house would be over a thousand square feet. Um, certainly, if you go before below four hundred square feet, there's a whole another um, set of issues. So that's why we really tweaked this model to get it up to the size that it was, which maybe wouldn't have been necessary for a single person. But we wanted to create something, again, that had a lot of options and that was of the scale and quality that we would all want to live in ourselves. So, you know, they, these guys had a business that have a business that does hunting cabins, but this is not a hunting cabin with a bathroom. This is an actual house with all the amenities. I mean, I, we haven't even decided if we're going to put marble countertops in. I mean, the point is, this is going to be as first class a place as you or I would live in. It's just going to be to a smaller scale. It's not the only challenge out in Bithlo, though, right? I mean, housing is not the only thing you're, you're dealing with out there. No, no, we're working, you know, simultaneously in nine broad areas. But again, healthcare, transportation, uh, basic needs, building a sense of community, the environments, arts and athletics, all of the ingredients that have to come together for any community to be healthy. United Global Outreach is working on related to the Bithlo project. You're listening to Intersection on 90.7 News. I'm Matthew Petty. We're talking with Tim McKinney from United Global Outreach in Bithlow and also Bill Ford from New Dignity Homes. Uh, Tim McKinney, as far as this housing project goes, when are you expecting to see the first of these homes go in there? Well, so the model home permit has now been approved. We've cleared all the conditions. And so our next barrier is to work through the impact fees. Again, this is a model home really a model for the community, the broader community throughout Orange County to come and tour really Central Florida and maybe beyond to tour and see this first house that's never been built. So we're looking for the county to, through some already established funding streams, to work with us on the impact fees, particularly the traffic impact fee, which happens to be ironically over $4,000, which as it relates to Bithlow and East Orange County, our organization is leading the way and resolving traffic issues. So uh, it's a little bit counterintuitive that we would pay an impact fee on this first small model home. So once that's cleared uh, by a committee and the staff, a committee, and then the Board of County Commissioners, Bill and his folks will immediately send a team down to lead an initiative to build this small house. 
I want to come back to the impact fees in a moment, but uh, Bill Ford, you already have one of these homes set up somewhere? We've got them throughout the uh, Midwest, in the uh, Tennessee, those type of areas. So there's one basically ready to be put on a trailer and roll down here? Yeah, we've been ready, yes. This particular house has been built already, waiting for the permit to be approved. So let me come back to the impact fee. So you're saying you pay more than $4,000 for a home, but who who pays that? Is it the builder or is it the Well, this is something I think uh, on a broader scale beyond this model, we're going to have to look at as a county um, because obviously if we're going to have a a price point like we have here with these small houses of $25,000, it's going to be counterproductive for the impact fees to be 25 or 30 or 40 percent. It's a regressive scale, therefore the reason that there would be no innovative models of affordable housing. So we're going to work through it with this model, and then we're going to make the case for why some of these fees ought to be uh, adjusted or waived because of the greater community benefit to provide affordable housing in the region. Typically, those fees would go towards repairing roads, that kind of thing? Yeah, I think traditionally, you know, uh, the traffic impact fee would be to o- offset or mitigate the cost for the additional traffic that construction or, or building homes would cause. Mm-hmm. In the case of Bithlow or East Orange County, I can tell you that uh, we're already on top of the traffic issue and uh, short of me billing the county for my consulting work and uh, paying for it that way, I think we can come at a a better solution. So you're saying that there should be exceptions in some cases? I think as we look beyond this model and look at duplicating this in a larger scale, we've got to look at some of these impact fees because again, they're like a speeding ticket. It's a regressive fine. If you're poor, the $150 ticket can be absolutely devastating. If you live in Isleworth, you, you maybe don't give it a second thought. When we talk about affordable housing across the region, I think we're going to have to look at some of the fees and fine and, and and charges that are that that are levied, so that we don't create unnecessarily a barrier for innovation. Because I think we know homelessness is a huge issue. Mm-hmm. We know that low wages is a huge issue. Which again, if we can create a solution for affordable housing, the pressure on wages will not be as big a deal. True affordable housing, which we're proposing, is that any resident would only pay 30% of whatever their income is. And that means you've got to have some other way of paying for it because every house is going to have a fixed cost whether you can afford to, as the homeowner to pay for it or not. Correct. That's why we're leveraging private partnerships and we'll have no debt on this project, the Dignity Village project, which will allow us to cash flow without any government programs or grants to be able to produce a product that will pay for itself on the 30% sliding discount. Bill Ford, what's the cost of producing one of these units? You know, it, it ranges to, based on the model, but the mm-hmm. two-story is around the $30,000 mark is mm-hmm. when it's finished off. Um, so it's extremely affordable. Uh, okay. And, I mean, if you were building them in bulk, would you be able to do it cheaper? Well, you know, that's the, the good news about this is that we've got certain strategic partners we're dealing with that's going to provide certain things. So we hope to reduce that by um, certain organization stepping up helping us out mm-hmm. you know the the, the uh, foundation is one thing you know we've got a partner there the inside the plumbing the electrical all those things are uh, we're open to have strategic partners to help us along in the fact way. an exciting announcement cornerstone concrete that's uh, doing the concrete at the orlando city soccer stadium is donating not only the concrete foundation for our model home but is donating all the concrete foundations for the dignity village project so again good people want to get together to solve uh, society's issues. And that's why we're going to be able to get this thing done. Um, and, and people are going to be able to afford to live in them. Bill Ford, how did you arrive at this point? You've got this venture to build affordable housing for the homeless and emergency shelters. How did you get here? Well, it's a three-year journey. Um, a partner of mine, Tom Wasman, who is a partner with us at New Dignity Homes, um, we had to, we had very successful businesses, and we decided to do something to give back to the community. We met with um, uh, Catholic Charities, and uh, at the time, they were very into the homeless, and this was three or four years ago. Mm-hmm. So Tom and I went to go visit uh, some of the shelters that they had, and we went and saw these tents, and we said, there's got to be a different way that these people can um, get back on the streets. So we looked at that and said, what could we do? Well, our third partner ended up uh, building these these homes, um, uh, these cabins, let's call mm-hmm. them, up in, the, um, up in the Tennessee area and everything. And he said, this would work perfect here where we can have the community help build it and an affordable cost, okay? So we put it together, put together the game plan. We studied it for about uh, three years now in the making. And um, every place we went to, they said, we have the greatest program to rehab the, uh, the homeless, get them back on the streets. 
but the bad news is they'd have to go back into the into the the park benches, the woods, the mm -hmm. uh, shelters that it's not conducive to to get them to, to get up the next morning and be excited about their day. So with that, we said, and everyone has said, we need shelters, we need some place to put them, we need homes, and that was the theme throughout everything we did. So, and then we were blessed through a mutual partner to be able to meet with Tim McKinney, who has a vision that's uh, just absolutely phenomenal what he wants to do with the plans out in Biflo area. Mm -hmm. We said, well, we want to partner with you. And uh, he said, vice versa. So he challenged us to take our design, which we had a very simple model. It was basically a, uh, a better better idea than a tent and very nice uh, setup uh, to make it uh, so that he or I or anybody else would, would uh, be comfortable living in it. So you know, that's what we did today. And uh, we've been through permitting and, and uh, again, they were excited to see it and uh, they uh, never seen anything like it. Take me back to when you met with Catholic Charities. Was that in Florida or was oh, that elsewhere? Correct, right in Orlando, yes. Okay. I've uh, Tom and I both were raised here. We went to uh, Bishop Moore uh, High School in, in Orlando. So we were uh, lifelong friends and, um, and we said, we gotta give back something. And we, mm -hmm. that's how we started the process of what can we do? And, and that started the ball rolling. But you're, you're not a builder by trade. That's not No, your that's the blessing of this thing. You really don't need to be. We, mm -hmm. we found strategic partners that are and uh, that can build the structure and put it together and, and do that. That's our third partner. So it works out real well that way. So would you be able to put up one of these homes? Well, I know how to work a wrench. I know how to work a power drill. So you betcha. What was your business before you moved into this? I had an alarm company for uh, 30 years in Orlando. It was very successful and got to retire and, and came out of retirement to do this. So it's been exciting. How do you see this evolving? Like, this is not going to be the only place you want to see these these oh, no. new homes going up. No, unfortunately, that homeless uh, is is a condition all over the country. Uh, we've had um, people inquire about um, our process, and they want to come see the home. And um, and we cannot wait to get our first one up and running. Um, Tim's getting calls left and right of people that want to just walk through it and then meet with us and go over it. Um, we've got, I don't want to give the names of them, but there's about eight or nine different uh, communities, organizations that are saying, when can we see the first unit? Mm -hmm. uh, because we've got to build a quality home that you would be willing to live in. And uh, I mean, I'm talking about full air conditioned, um, you know, ceiling fans, electrical, and you know, all the, the uh, comforts of home. Tim McKinney, I wonder if you're going to have folks who are just interested in buying a place that's not going to put them in debt for years and years, not necessarily homeless folks, because you talked about the small house movement. That's pretty popular right now. People just want to be debt free, right? So are you getting some inquiries from folks who are just like, I want to spend as little as possible on a small house. I don't care about the size, kind of a change of lifestyle. Absolutely. I predict that um, this will drive, like I said, innovation and, and, and others. And this is not a homeless project, by the way. This was born out of, of trying to find a model of a f quality affordable housing. So this will have an application for permanent supportive housing for the homeless. It'll also have an application for folks that uh, have more modest income. And then it'll have an application for people that just want to live a little bit more of a minimal uh, lifestyle as far as space and things that they have. Mm -hmm. But again, the village concept will provide all of the amenities that you would have if you had a much larger home on your own, you know, outdoor barbecue, uh, porch, community kitchens, dining rooms, and all of that. So I don't think you're giving up much, if anything, to live in one of these small homes. In fact, I think you might be gaining something, and that's a sense of community. So what's the next step? You've still got some things to work out as far as actually getting this home on the ground here in Orlando. Yeah, so we're, we've submitted our application. There is a, a fund available through Orange County that nonprofits qualify for when their use is for the greater community benefit. We expect this to be approved with no problems in very short order because, like I say, we've had excellent county staff participation realizing that this is going to be – Orange County government's going to be a leader for the region and producing this model. So I, I think that's awesome. Florida Hospital actually funded the first model small home. So they're excited about this coming on board. And I think this is just going to really cause an explosion in access to inventory once we get this f first house uh, uh, built. I've had folks reach out to me from municipalities as far as Indiana, mm -hmm. anxious to, to tour this house. And we've had veterans that are very interested in this program, you know, because that's the number one topic. Everybody's uh, looking forward to take care of the, the veterans who have uh, served our country well. So. We're really looking forward to creating the same type of village for, for the veterans. And actually the product they produced, if you look at the price point for the quote tiny homes, the small houses on trailers, they're producing a house that's two and a half or three times as large for as much or less money. 
So, I mean, it's just so great in so many ways. Is there a risk, do you think, Tim McKinney, of, you know, an enclave developing that maybe some people wouldn't want next to their property or or they wouldn't want to live in for one reason or another? Yeah, so that's why the excellence of the project is so critical. So in the case of Dignity Village, there'll be on-site property management like I have in my condo building right now, making sure that quality controls are kept to the highest standard for years to come. Um, and then placement is essential, obviously. So it has to fit within the character and scale of the community or the neighborhood that's being developed. So I, I think that those those barriers or those concerns, rather, um, once the, the, the model home is built and everybody can actually walk through it, touch it, and feel it themselves, a lot of that stuff is going to fall to the side. So, Bill Ford, when are the doors going to open on this, this new home? When, when can we see it? We were hoping in May of last year. Um, we are ready and prepared. Um, we've got one final step, and that is to uh, work out the permit uh, fees. But uh, permit has been um, signed off, and, um, and we're just now into that stage. So once that gets done, we've got 30 days to gather everything, get the um, uh, people together, the volunteers, and uh, get the rest of the people ready to go. So we'll be ready to go. Bill Ford is with New Dignity Homes. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you for having us. And Tim McKinney is the CEO of United Global Outreach in Bithlow. Thank you so much, Tim. Thanks. Always a pleasure.